Good morning. It's a pot roast Monday for us. So um, we are going to throw all of our ingredients in and cook it for six hours. And then we'll come back and make some gravy and some cornbread uh, to go with this. And you'll get to see how we do all that. This has celery, carrots, onions, potatoes, a pot roast, beef bouillon, salt, basil, water, and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, I think. I don't know. Anyways, that's just a fun word to say. Can you say Worcestershire? No. No? <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Okay. I can tell. You can tell? It's too hard. Yeah, it is. It's hard for me. So first thing you need to do is chop and slice your veggies. The carrots and the celery get thinly sliced. The onion gets chopped. This is one onion, two potatoes, three stalks of celery, and a pound of carrots. Um, use your scale to measure out your carrots. I left a carrot and a celery and a potato to slice for you. The celery, carrot, and potato are sliced. The onion is chopped. I'm gonna just throw all that in. As you can see, we are joined by our assistant. It's okay. I'll get them again in a second. So, when you cut a carrot, you cut off the bottom and the top, and this is peeled. And then you just make tiny slices. Carrots tend to be pretty firm. Watch your fingers, baby. I'll just take it back on. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, it gets loud and they kind of go flying sometimes because yeah. carrots are really firm. Be careful to not cut yours out. That's good advice. Slide those in there with the rest of your veggies. Same thing with your celery. You want to cut off the bottom and cut off the top right behind that indent right there, that natural indention. Cut off right behind that and then slice. Now you can make this recipe in your Dutch oven instead of your crock pot. It cooks a little bit differently and you'll cut your vegetables a little differently. Instead of thinly slicing them, you'll cut your veggies into bigger pieces. You'll pre-cook your meat in some um, cooking oil. Uh, and then you'll put it all together in the oven, in the Dutch oven for I think an hour. Um, yeah. my, my potato is peeled and we're Thinly slicing it. Mom, do you cut off the top? Um, we're going to use the top. It's good because we took off the peeling. So this is not like the celery and carrot where we cut off the top and bottom. We're just thinly slicing it. Keeping our fingers out of the way. All right, that's our veggies. This is so easy because you, you just throw everything out. So, can you get in there and see what it looks like? Yeah. All right, so now we are going to mix up our sauce. Correct. Double checking what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, I'm going to put my roast in first. Now, you can, if you've got a really large roast and your crock pot is small, you can cut it so that it fits. You can trim the fat from the meat. Most of the fat on this roast is kind of inside, so I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to stick it in there. And then I'm going to mix up everything else. We're using a cup of water. Here, you want to come over here and help? Yeah, because I haven't been, I haven't really mm -hmm. been helping. Can you pour that in? That's three-fourths a cup of warm water. Yeah, I can pour it in backwards. Yeah. Turning. Okay, now we need it's called backwards. a tablespoon of Worcestershire. You sure you don't want to try to say it? No. I'm not going to. You're not going to? I might, I might need help opening it. There we go. Mom? Um, so this is a half a tablespoon. So one half plus one half equals? One full. One full, one whole. So we're going to do the one half twice. We use, we use cooking to help teach math and fractions. So there's one half. And here's another half, and that equals how much do we say? A whole. One whole. One whole tablespoon of Worcestershire. And we need 
one teaspoon. Um, I'll do this one. You'll do this one. One teaspoon of dried basil. I don't okay. like basil. You don't like basil? Nope. I think you do and you just don't realize it. No. Yeah, I bet. And then... Or maybe I just don't taste it. That's probably you just don't taste it. What's that? This is beef bouillon. One oh. beef bouillon cube or one teaspoon of beef bouillon powder. Mom, yes. I will put it in. Okay. Because it's a cube. Not powder, sorry, granules. So yeah, you either do one cube or one teaspoon. Sometimes opening it can be tricky. Now you gotta break it up. Can you break it up? Uh, you break it you up. You want me to break it up? It's kind of solid today. Sometimes they don't want to break. Oh, I won't. It's okay. My hand is on top of the knife, not below. Oh. So the top? The top is not sharp. Okay. Okay. I thought both sides were. Nope, it's not a sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said I was playing. I'm sorry. You want to do the salt? I'm you wanna, just doing it. You want to grind the salt? We need a fourth a teaspoon of salt. It's so little, I'm not even going to bother measuring it. Uh, it's so not. <laughs> okay. That's okay. All right. So this is three-fourths of cups of water, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, a teaspoon of instant bouillon granules, or one whole cube of beef bouillon, um, beef bouillon and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to use my fork to mix it all up. I would like to. You would like to? Okay, gently. You did it fast. Yeah. And accidentally getting speed. Okay. I didn't say slow, I said gently. You can do fast and gentle. Okay, I think we're good. Now, because it's all squirrely. scoot your child to the other counter. <laughs> okay, and you're just gonna pour this over your meat. And then I'm going to scrape some of that basil out because we don't want to lose all that good flavor. Gross flavor. Mmm, good flavor. Gross. Is it gross because it's green? Is that why you don't like it? No. Mm. Or it's just they don't taste it. I think, I think you don't taste it because basil is what makes tomato sauce yummy, like spaghetti sauce. Yeah. And Yeah, I love spaghetti then, sauce. Then you like basil. Because basil is what or makes spaghetti sauce good. Or maybe I don't taste it. And basil is what makes breadsticks good. What? Or maybe I just don't taste it. Okay. If you say so, child. All right, so we're going to put the lid on this, cook it on low for 10 to 12 hours, or on high for 5 to 6. So yeah, we're going to do it on high. Why doesn't it click on? It just puts it on. It just it just sits. The clicks are for um when you when you take it somewhere. If like after it was already cooked and I wanted to take it somewhere, I would click the lid on to seal it. But if you it, it so here's a tip. If you have this crock pot and you click the lid shut while it's cooking, you're building up too much pressure and it will break either your crock pot insert or your lid. Don't do that. We've done that and broke it, and this is our replacement. Please don't do that. So this is gonna cook for us for six hours. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna make some gravy with the drippings that are left in the pot, which will be so yummy. Um, as far as health goes, this is, uh, it makes eight to 10 servings. And so, you know, obviously it kind of varies a little bit based on how much you're serving yourself, but it's about 17 grams of carbs per serving. And for those of you who are counting calories, it's about 307 calories. So this is a really healthy, yummy, delicious meal that I hope you can see was very easy. It takes a little bit of prep work with chopping the vegetables. But other than that, I'm going to leave it and forget about it for the rest of the day. I hope you have a wonderful day. We will be right back.
Okay, we are back. It has been a little bit more than six hours, so my crock pot is already on the warm setting. Uh, we are ready to make the gravy and have dinner. I have cornbread muffins already in the oven cooking. That roast looks yummy. Just using my tongs to pull out the roast. And I could have put it on a plate. I don't know why I put it on um, in a bowl. I just did. And I'm going to put it over here on my oven on the warming center. On low. And I'm going to throw some paper towels over it just to kind of get the heat in. I will cut it into serving size pieces in a little bit. Can you have the paper towels on the warming part? Yes. I have before. And it's not been a problem. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to spoon out my veggies. I'm using a slotted spoon because I want the juice to be left behind. I will pull that out in a second to make the gravy. That steam. Mm. I've been cooking all day. Yeah. When you start to get to the bottom, it gets a little bit harder to <laughs> scoop everything out. So very carefully tilt your pot. Okay, that's pretty good. There might be a couple carrot pieces left in there, but it's fine. Okay, same deal. I'm gonna put this over here on the warming center. We're gonna kind of share the space. Put the towel over it to keep that heat in. All right. Now I have a sauce pot over there on the stove. I am going to pull out enough juices to equal one and a half cups. And if I don't have enough juice for that, I can add water to make up the difference. One and a half cups. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it's dark down here, and as it gets to the top, it gets lighter. And there's kind of a thin layer that's almost clear. That's fat. So we're gonna use a skimmer to skim off the fat. It's like a very close knitted mesh strainer. I'm specifically for getting that fat off, but you can see it doesn't fit in this. I'm gonna go ahead and do it from the pot. My pot's not on yet, so that's okay. Give that a second for that to kind of come to the surface again. And you just set your skimmer in there. And it also gets out the little like meat bits and stuff that maybe have maybe come you, in. Maybe you wanted to do that, maybe you don't. Like you could have yeah. poured it through the strainer. Yeah, yeah, I could have, I suppose. Yeah, but it would it would fill up the strainer and you'd have to keep shaking it off. It would take forever. Right. Um, and this can kind of take, it can be kind of tedious. So I'm not usually very particular about it anyways. Um, this just kind of helps cut down some of the fat content of what you're eating. So if you're not a real stickler, stickler for worrying about fat, then it's really okay. And this recipe is kind of a low, lower fat recipe anyways. So it's really okay. So, I mean, that's about maybe like an eighth of a cup worth, so like it's hardly anything. I don't even know if it'd say that much, so. Okay, so we're gonna let this cook. I'm gonna turn it on. 
I'm gonna go ahead and have it on high to get it warmed up. And I'm going to get a cup of cold water. Cold water. Cold Just water. Cold water. Okay. One cup of cold water. And I'm gonna get a fourth a cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna get a fork. I'm gonna take these over to my stove. Okay. I'm going to pour my flour, it's a fourth a cup of all-purpose flour, into my cold water, my one cup of cold water. I'm going to mix it up with my fork, getting as many of those clumps out as possible. You could use a whisk if you wanted to. My whisk is dirty for making cornbread muffins. So a fork works in a pinch. So you have this kind of almost milky looking liquid. You get all those clumps out. So a little bit clumpy, but it's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna pour that in to our juices. And now we're gonna cook and stir until it's thick and bubbly. Cooking and stirring means literally you have to stir it the whole time. You cannot stop. And yes, it's tedious. But it's not hard. No, it's not at all hard. Right. And it's good. So we're going to cook and stir until thick and bubbly. And then we're going to cook and stir for another full minute after that. Before removing it from the heat and pouring it into a gravy boat. Now if you don't have a gravy boat, that's fine. You go ahead and keep it in your pot. Um, or you could put it in like a little bowl. Or a measuring glass. Um, gravy boats are nice because they usually have a pouring spout but it's okay if you do not have one. It's also okay if you've got some veggies in this, like maybe some leftover carrot pieces or um, maybe some bits of meat. It's okay, it's really fine. You're gonna pour this over your meat and your veggies anyway, so it's really, it's gonna be good. Now we're gonna let this cook and stir, and we will be back when it is almost ready to serve. We have great big old cauldron bubbles going. So we're gonna cook and stir for our one final minute. And I'm actually probably about 20 seconds into that final minute, judging by the timer I have on my oven for my muffins. Um, you can see these great big old giant boil bubbles at like, and, and it sounds like a, a cauldron bubbling from like an old scary movie. You can't see it, but I can feel the resistance on my spoon. This is why you have to cook and stir because it, it is definitely thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. If you're not stirring throughout this whole process, you will, it will get glued to your bottom and, and you don't want that. Not only will that be more difficult to clean, but it won't be as tasty. A ah, couple of pointers about this. Make sure that you use cold water. It can't be warm. It cannot be room temperature or lukewarm. It has to be cold. Not ice cold, but cold. So it's a little finicky. When you add the flour to that cold water, you have to get all those lumps out, um, which is why I say stir it with a fork. A fork's gonna give you more uh, room to stir than a whisk will. So you can, you can really break up any clumps of flour that there is. You could even pre-sift your flour if you so choose. Uh, and that will help the water and the flour kind of come together in this like creamy sort of way. When you add it to the juices from your meat, that makes a good thick gravy that's not clumpy or lumpy or weird. And it's nice and thick without being like too thick. Okay, it's been our minute, so I'm taking it off the heat giving it a couple of good stirs to go. And I'm gonna let it settle while I get out my gravy boat. 
Yeah, that's a really smooth gravy. Yeah, it's not, it's not as thick as the gravy that most people are familiar with. It is still kind of a thin, more of a sauce than a gravy. Oh yeah, it does have that consistency, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but still, it's super, super yummy. And it fills up my gravy book completely nicely. And you can kind of see where it, here it's thicker on the bottom. And so like most gravies or sauces, as it sits, it'll thicken a little bit more. It'll develop kind of a skin over the top. Um, and that's okay. It's completely okay. I'm gonna make up a plate so you guys can get the full effect of how awesome and yummy this dinner will look. This whole meal makes about, it says eight to 10 servings. Um, but when it comes to the meat, it really doesn't necessarily, I guess it depends on how big of a roast you make. And this was a chuck roast, as you saw at the beginning of the video, it's got those sections of fat between it, where it's yeah. like natural sections. And I think it was about a pound and a half. Yeah, it was a pound and a half. I would have preferred a bigger roast. Um, we are a family of six, and so it can kind of get difficult to feed us all on just a pound and a half. So there's a good size piece of meat. Cornbread, so you're gonna get the full effect because even my cornbread is done. Which you did not see the recipe for the cornbread. Um, I did that in a different video, which I can link in the comments to see how to make the cornbread. It's really super simple. Um, thank goodness, because that's really the only kind of food I like making is simple. <laughs> oh, you make plenty of things that aren't simple. I make macaroni and cheese, and that sometimes is difficult. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, getting some veggies. This will be my plate, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it really full with veggies. But I'm gonna try to go heavier on the carrots and celery, and not so much on the potatoes because potatoes are carb heavy. Okay, and then I can have one muffin. Go around the edge of the muffin with a butter knife to get that out. And then the gravy. Mmm, doesn't that look delicious? And it looks really fattening and unhealthy, and it's so totally not. This is about 34 grams of carbs. Um, and let me really quick look at the calories and the fat content. It is 307 calories, um, which 300 sounds like a big number, but when you think your average daily calorie count for somebody trying to maintain their weight is 2,000 calories, or 1,500 if you're trying to uh, lose weight, 300 is not very much. Now that's not including the cornbread. The cornbread adds, I think maybe another 100. So we're probably really close to 500. Um, and that includes the gravy. And then there's only three grams of saturated fat plus the cornbread, which I think is one maybe, if that. So this is a really great meal that's healthy, it's diabetic friendly, it's low calorie, it's low saturated fat. Like you could eat a full serving, fill up and still have room in your diet for dessert if you have a nice low carb, low calorie dessert. I'm gonna go have dinner. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you like this recipe, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, share the video, and um, don't forget to follow our blog too, which I will link in the description so that you can check out different cooking tips and meal planning ideas that I have for you.